Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to another uh, Diversified Semantic Layer podcast. Um, we're starting off a new podcast series uh, today and focusing on Information Steward, uh, which is one of the um, products in the Business Objects Enterprise Information Management portfolio. And I'm joined by uh, Michael Bryles from uh, that team. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. Very good. Thank you very much. Great. Could you uh, just introduce yourself uh, and your, your background and, uh, and what your role is at SAP now? Sure. So I am a solution manager for, informa for Information Steward and uh, Site Based Power Designer. So those are two solutions that belong to the Enterprise Information Management Portfolio. And uh, I've uh, worked with SAP technology really since I joined the company back in 2000 uh, as a consultant, as a product manager. Uh, working my way from doing the kind of the basis administration to the master data management solutions, and then after our acquisition of business objects, ended up working with uh, information steward, uh, data services, and then now after our power designer, site based acquisition, power designer. So all related technologies. And uh, so yeah, I've been with the company about 13 years, and I'm based out of uh, Seattle, Washington. Great. Well, um, we really appreciate your time. <clears throat> well, it's my morning, your afternoon, um, and, and spending some time answering some questions about Information Steward and the EIM portfolio. So one of the, the key things, I guess, in, in terms of customers that might not be familiar um, with those products, what are the key business opportunities? Key business opportunities for Information Steward specifically? Um, okay, yeah. So with Information Steward, the beautiful thing about this solution is that what it does is allows you, one, to profile information right out of the box. You can do data, data assessment, uh, some statistical analysis to understand where you are in terms of the state of your data uh, on any source, so it's not SAP specific. Uh, and uh, from that, what you can do is when you do the quick analysis, you could be looking at pattern analysis, for example, uh, looking at uh, maybe you're looking at a column of data that's supposed to have pallet information and look at the, the distinct values of a, of a pallet. Uh, you can do some more advanced profiling capabilities like looking at dependency of data, uh, address correctness or validations, or address correctness or correctableness, I should say. So meaning that if you were looking at uh, some information that would, would contain address information, you could quickly assess whether or not uh, or how much of those records contain valid information, correctable information using SAP data services, meaning that we there's enough information to uh, correct the address data to to um, uh, to make it I guess accurate, and then there's you know the, the records that actually have incorrect information altogether. We look at dependency or uh, distribution of data. You know we could look at things like, for example, if you've got sales orders tied to customer records that have incomplete information. What that could tell you is, for example, that I've got a number of products that are either sitting in inventory that aren't moving, so maybe I want to uh, retire those products, or uh, it could be that they are products that we aren't, they aren't in inventory, they're just obsolete products that we no longer make, but they're still in my system, so maybe I've got reason to start uh, archiving that data. And there's a lot of capabilities in there, but uh, you know, so that's profiling. Uh, uh, you can do data quality assessment beyond that, start building validation rules. So once you've done your quick assessment, then you actually do, you can build validation rules to further refine and assess your data quality in the different systems. And then from the validation rules, you can actually build scorecards. And these are interactive scorecards so that based on the validation rules that you set, that you qualify or categorize by data quality dimensions, what that allows you to do is then from the, the scorecard, you can, again, quickly assess where you're at. The scorecard has uh, different color codes, color codes for thresholds to indicate where you are in terms of data quality. You can drill down into the scorecards according to different data quality dimensions, which could be correctness, completeness, conformity, uniqueness, or, or a self-defined data quality dimension. And then from that, you can isolate where you have data quality problems. So if you think about that, let's say think about maybe master data management or something like that. And we're not restricted to master data, but this is just an example. You could set up a number of scorecards on product and supplier uh, or customer, vendor, what have you across your uh, entire landscape, assess where you're at. And then what you could do is basically determine a roadmap uh, as to, well, what do we want to do next? We might be looking at the customer data and say, it's okay. 
the product data is in the green, but the, our supplier data is in the red. Something's going on with the supplier data. It's in really bad shape. How is that impacting us? So what you can do with the scorecards is then you know, drill down into and isolate ex where exactly are the data quality problems happening. You can build business value analysis into this. So there's a, a dashboard capability to actually add uh, cost measures to it. What's the impact of this? Well, let's say I have incorrectable addresses or incorrect addresses. And I know that if I have, as I mentioned earlier, kind of that dependency of data, if I have orders that are tied to, let's say, customers with invalid addresses or ship to addresses, then mm. what I know is straight off the bat, I potentially have a fee from the carrier that says, okay, if I ship this product, the carrier is going to return the product to me and say it was an invalid address, plus I charged you, let's say, $50. So what you could do is start building these business value uh, calculators, or you work with the worksheets to build the business value analysis to say, not only from the scorecard can I determine how bad my data is, but I can also estimate what the financial impact is or business value. And from that, I can use that as really a conversation starter with different key stakeholders within different departments. So whether it's you know, finance and accounting, HR, uh, plant maintenance, production, whatever it is, you, you now have something uh, visual and tangible to say, this is where, the, where we really are with data quality. And that's kind of been raising a lot of eyebrows with information, Stuart. And there's uh, four more key capabilities in there that I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain. One is metadata management. Metadata management also allows you to trace lineage of data from uh, analytical sources up into the reports. Actually, lineage would be the other way around. Look at the report and then down into its sources or impact analysis, which says, again, if I'm going through the interactive scorecard, I drill down into the scorecard, I find a specific validation role, I have a significant number of record failures. And from that, I can do impact analysis, which says, well, how many reports that are dependent on this data are affected by this bad data? And again, business value analysis can come into play there as well. And that's the metadata management piece. It's a, it's a metadata repository, so we collect metadata, metadata from SAP and non-SAP applications or, or data sources, put them in the repository. You can add annotations to them. Uh, again, we derive the lineage and impact analysis. In addition to that, we can actually link business terms to it create a business term glossary and a component we call Metapedia. And with that, so you can, you can create your business terms and phrases, organize them in hierarchies. Um, we have a review and approve process for those business terms, so it becomes your central business term glossary. Uh, and it's also web service enabled, so not only can you tie the business terms to assets within information steward, but you can tie uh, those business terms to, let's say, fields and transactions and, let's say, an SAP ECC or EIP application. So if you're on a field, you can go to F1, call it, call up the information from web serv as a web service call and get the definition back for what you're looking at. Uh, then another component we have is Cleansing Package Builder, which is really extension of our data services application. What this does is once you've done this analysis, let's say you've done some basic and advanced profiling, you've built validation rules to further assess data quality, you've built out your scorecards, now you want to take action on it. Uh, the Cleansing Package Builder, what we do with that is we enable uh, business users or business analysts, people who work closer with the data from a day-to-day -day basis or a transactional basis, we allow them to be able to create and define strategies for cleaning up their data, for cleansing and, 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 or cleansing and parsing and standardizing and pending information as it would go through a data services, let's call it a data quality or data integration job. So. They do not then need to be in the technical application, the ETL application. They simply go to this user-friendly UI, which is uh, web-based, to define these cleansing packages, and those can then be published to the ETL application, in our case, uh, data services. And then the uh, another component we have, and there's a couple other components, we have match review, which again allows you to interact with uh, the data as it goes through. This is a kind of an extension of data services. As it goes through a match, what we call a match transform or a match job within a data services job, where normally what we used to do is that you'd have a data services job that gets to a matching component and says, all right, this is what I'm going to do with these records that are a match. I synchronize them with a master record and they can be processed and the rest get dumped out to a file for somebody to manually review. Uh, now we have a, a point where you can pick up in midstream of that job 
uh, with Match Review to actually look at the match group, determine what should be the master record, uh, kick out any records that are not, uh, should be in the group, for example, uh, and then you can sync, you know, continue on from the job there and allows the, the data services to pick up the job and process it. And then additionally, we do a, the ability to create the best record. Uh, so as part of that match review now, you could, instead of just picking one record as the master, you can pick different fields as a, and prioritize them as being part of the, uh, the match, the match review process to say, all right, I want to create a best record from this strategy. And is that about it? I mean, there's a lot to cover in information, Stuart, and there's a lot to say. So there, there's, there's probably so much more information I'm, I'm leaving out, but. You know, obviously, you can go to sap.com to, to learn more about what's an information steward. But uh, I think as a, as a starting point, that's a good, good description of all the capabilities. Yeah, uh, excellent. Thanks. I mean, that was, uh, it sounds like there's so many different opportunities um, for, for customers to use this software. And there's, there's lots of different areas that they could apply it as well. They don't, you know, you, um, <clears throat> some might find the profiling to, to really help them or or perhaps it's the, the business term glossary. Um, be, because there's so many opportunities, could you maybe give us uh, one or two examples where you're seeing information steward make a real impact in, uh, in certain industries? Well, I mean, the solutions itself is not industry specific. So, you know, where we see industries is really kind of across the board. Uh, certainly we see uh, banking, financial services having uh, interest in that. Um, Consumer products, uh, retail. Uh, let me think of another. Um, that be consumer products uh, and the pharmaceutical. I mean, there's a number of them off the top of my head. So I'm just through the, the, the leaders into this. Uh, so I don't know if I have a specific example. I can say, for example, on consumer products, we have what is a consumer product slash retail. Uh, one customer is was specifically interested in the metadata management component of information steward. They wanted their business analysts to be able to understand how is data flowing from those sources to the um, to the reports, and specifically start building that central business term glossary. And that was where they started. But interestingly enough, after they've had the, the solution for a while, we highlighted the fact that you know there's a, here are these other components you you didn't buy it for, but are available to you. And that was the data insight component. So that was the validation rules and the scorecarding. And they kind of switched gears on their on their uh, deployment of information, Stuart. So they still have interest in using the data lineage and impact net analysis and the metadata repository. But as they really showcase the solution to some of their business users, uh, the, the priority shifted. And now they've adopted the solution more to actually analyze the current current state of their data, share that scorecard information, and, and build uh, um, momentum around improving data quality. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So, um, I mean, there's, it integrates really well with all the business objects and SAP products, I know, but uh, do, do you need those those products um, to use information, Stuart, or, or are you seeing customers pick it up that don't run any other uh, SAP product? So, no, you don't need those other products. And from a foundation standpoint, Information Steward today was built on the business object stack, which we call business object enterprise or enterprise server. Uh, and then from a, so from an installation standpoint, you have two runtime components, business objects, um, what we call information platform services, IPS, and then we layer on top of that uh, the data services of component. So SAP business objects or what was business objects data server is then installed next, and then you install information steward on top of that. So that's where the integration comes from. That's why we can do the, the lineage and impact analysis <coughs> from uh, reports to sources, as um, as well as build cleansing packages and deploy them in the data services and do the match review because that's all tightly integrated. Um, but if you licensed information steward standalone, you would get those components as part of your runtime license anyways. Hmm. So you don't actually, so you don't have to actually, so you, you know, when you're, when you're purchasing information to it, you're not purchasing data services or business objects or enterprise server. Although there are runtime components that are provided to you as part of your information steward license. Okay. Excellent. 
Um, so uh, I know information steward, uh, I, I know the history in terms of where it's come from as a product and, and it is quite a, a new um, product where you pull together certain pieces from across the portfolio into now information steward. Uh, but, but it is still relatively new as a, as a product um, to the market. Uh, one of the things that, that I'm trying to do with this podcast series is to you know, share more information about you know, using um, the product in different ways. But could you give us um, some information on, I guess, what SAP has planned to enable, uh, do further user enablement and training and that kind of thing? So in terms of user enablement, of course, one of the big sessions we have is, is our upcoming tech ads. Uh, we have tech ad US, and then there's the Sapphire tech ads in the different regions, Spain and um, – no, no, actually, it's in the – Netherlands this year, uh, Amsterdam, yep. then uh, I believe we're going to in Bangalore. Uh, so there we have a number of sessions. In fact, we're, we've got a session there that builds on uh, a story around, this is really to kind of incorporate all the solutions so you really get a feel for how all the solutions play in an information governance, information management type scenario, where we talk about uh, the airline industry and the recent mergers of, or possible merger of, uh, and, and and two big U.S. airlines, which was American Airlines and, and U.S. Airways, and how would we strategically go about merging their loyalty program? So what if scenario? What if you were, were responsible for that? Uh, what would you need to do? Uh, what solutions you know, would make sense along that, that journey? So we've got a session there. Uh, we also have a pre-conference session that's specifically focused on information steward and uh, Sybase Power Designer and their integration. From uh, so planning to design and execution, uh, where, you, where the metadata repositories come into play, as well as the business terms or the central business term glossary and how we share information between the applications. That's also a session. Um, and typically, if you want to look for the latest and greatest, you know, it, we, we do a lot of work on our uh, local SAP user group uh, conferences. So here in America, it would be the ASAP. And there's, uh, in, in, I think in Germany, they have a DSUG and the uh, Asia Pacific. I'm not sure specifically how it works, but we do publish there because I've got uh, solution managers who are my peers who do the same sessions in parallel in, in the different regions. And of course, you can uh, always go into SCN where we publish information uh, on enterprise information management. I just recently published there. If you did a search on information steward, you would see uh, an interactive demo that you can do yourself uh, for Information Steward actually guides you through the different components of Information Steward with call outs. So as you click where you're supposed to click, you'll see a call out that gives you an explanation of what am I looking at? What would I do with this? Um, you know, what's the business value of this or the value proposition as you navigate through? So it's really kind of a self-guided demo. So I, I like to direct people there as well. Okay, well, um, I know I've, I've had a look through that and I'll put it in the show notes so, so people can actually go and uh, look at that after they, they watch the video. Uh, so just to wrap up, um, maybe you could give us uh, a few um, uh, comments on what, uh, what's planned to, um, to come in the, the next releases of Information Steward, I guess, what's next for the product? So for information steward, we're looking to expand it. And again, everything I will say is roadmap. So I always have to put that sort of safe highway caveat in there that anything that I talk about. We can put on the big slide if you want. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> that it may or you know, it may or may not get into the release. Uh, so we won't necessarily say it's going to be the next release general say. So here's our here's our roadmap for the next 10 to 24 months and our objectives. And and, and two of the bigger objectives for information steward. Uh, one of them is enhancing our data quality advisor. And I didn't mention that earlier, but what the data quality advisor allows you to do is it identifies content automatically, content type. So, for example, if you had uh, some uh, party data, which, which would be, for example, like customer information, we would look at the, the data within a particular column and say, okay, this is, this is a phone number. This is an international phone number. This is a last name or surname. This is a a first name or given name. And then what it does is it actually recommends uh, validation rules, either based on best practices. So we, we do pre-deliver pre some validation rules that uh, follow best practices, as well as it will look to see what other validation rules have you applied to the same content type. 
And so, and then from that, you can also so then you can choose to apply those rules. That's one thing we do now. Uh, we're expanding that beyond the party data to be the non-party data as well. And then we're also enhancing the dashboard for creating the, the matching strategies within Data Quality Advisor, uh, as well as the, uh, the, the standardization. And, and, and then beyond that, uh, two other areas that we're looking to focus on. One is um, policy management. So as you want to define policies, it's kind of related to what you do in the business term glossary. But as you have policies that you have for data, what is our policy on customer master data? What's our policy on vendor data? You want to be able to define that somewhere, have that go through a sort of a review and approve process, but then be able to link that to assets within your, your metadata repository or even within uh, your validation rules repository so that you can see what those policies are. You can see how you are tracking according to your policy standards and guidelines that you've defined. And then in addition to that, another item that we're looking to focus on would be the uh, uh, sorry, business process context. So today you can do impact analysis, which is based on you know, metadata and how data flows from the, the analytical sources up to the report. But what we want to be able to do is provide you information uh, on, the, on the context, the business process context to, let's say, a validation rule failure, right? So what business processes are affected if I have a rule failure here. So then that, as you drill into a scorecard and find problem areas of data, you can surface not only the, the impact and lineage analysis, but then you can also look at the business process context. So this affected this business process, this line of business, this key stakeholder, for example. Um, yep. So those are all on the roadmap for us, and there are different levels of you know, still an idea, or some of them are being engineered at this point, or at least the resources have been identified. We just released 4.2, and so we're in ramp up for that. So we're really in the early stages of defining what's going to be in the next release. And then, of course, as the company embraces uh, HANA, we, too, in information mm -hmm. management, will look to embrace HANA as well. So that's also uh, in the works for us. Um, so what I was saying is... Um, so thanks for the, the overview of, of you know, what's in the roadmap and, and I, I guess customers can also uh, come to the ticket sessions or the pre-conference sessions um, that are coming up later in the year to, um, to get more details on that as well. Yep, that's right. And we would, well, you know, we're hoping to see a lot of people there. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks again, Michael, for your time today. And uh, we look forward to, to um, showing um, our listeners and, and viewers more, more information on Information Steward as well. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Josh. All right. Thanks, everyone. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by Visit us on the net at